Now focus on the Big Ten and the Mountain West. All right, second live yeah. episode, Steve. I am excited, and Steve, Guinness hat. Yeah. You know what three days ago was? Yeah. What was it? St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day. I've got some Guinness in my Big Mountain Cup. I've got my, my Guinness hat on, and to that I say, Slanche. Salute. Salute. Slanche. <laughs> raise a glass to the Big Mountain. We raise a glass to all of our viewers. Thank you guys very, very much. Let me take a swig of the cold goodness. Get my oil changed. JY, he doesn't celebrate St. Patty's Day. He celebrates St. Patty's Week. That's what it is, <laughs> apparently, yes. I never wear this hat either. I went, oh, that's right. I have this Guinness hat. I'm putting it on the mountain. Your your, your papa bought it for you. Right? Holy crud. He did. He bought it for me in Ireland. There this is go. legit from Ireland. All right. You could probably get it here, too, but he got it in Ireland. So, anyway, we welcome to all of our fans. Thank you guys for tuning in again. We'll stop having fun. We'll get to what we're here for, the Big Mountain. And the Mountain, oh, the Big Mountain, the, the Big, Big Ten, Ten, and the Mountain West. Yeah, it's exciting time right now, so this is our second live episode. We got 16 people showing up in the chat. Awesome. So we thank you guys. The Big Ten fan, he, the, the weight was driving him crazy, so he's happy. We're going to get started. Um, so give us, a, give us a shout out in the chat. Let us know who's there. Do we got... Big Ten fans, we got Mountain West fans, probably some Florida State fans, maybe I love it. some Clemson fans now. We'll see. Yeah, that's a great idea. Put put in the chat if you can. Which conference do you follow? And maybe it's multiple. And you know your favorite team. I'd yeah. like to know kind of some of that. And welcome, Big Ten fan, because uh, Big Ten fan. I don't, I don't think we've had a Big Ten fan before, right? Or maybe they changed maybe their maybe, maybe they changed their uh, username or something. I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna start with the Big Ten. Uh, to not let these guys wait any longer, yeah. I know there's a couple things you want to go over here, Steve. I know we, we focused on um, Washington mm -hmm. and Oregon last week, yeah. and I know you want to focus on USC and UCLA and maybe maybe some other goodies too. Yeah. So why don't you take it away? Yeah, so real quick before we get to those two, just want to throw a couple little shout-outs to what's going on around the Big Ten. We've got the you know Big Ten wrestling tournament happened a yes. couple weeks ago. The, 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 we talked about that. Um, nationals are coming up this week. We're, we're doing a preview episode for the Wrestling Nationals, so for our Big Ten fans, if you want to check that out, that should be hitting tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. um, we also are going to do a bracket challenge. JY is going to, to start that up later on yep. in the streaming episode. So i got a ton of Big Ten teams, I think six Big, big Ten teams um, in the uh, in the tournament. Six Big Ten, six Mountain West. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Samesies. So. The Samesies, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and the, the women's tournament. Um you know, Kayla Clark, she's all the rage. There's a lot of really good Big Ten teams in the mm -hmm. in the women's tournament. I mm -hmm. think Clark is, I think uh, Iowa, I think they're a number one seed. They played their way into a number one seed, won the Big Ten championship. They got LSU in their bracket, which wow. is crazy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of cool things happening around the Big Ten. Like JY said, last week I focused on, you know, we have some new members coming to the Big Ten. Yeah. Focused on Washington, Oregon. Just talked about some things going with them. And this is more, you know, an introduction to Big Ten fans, to, to these new teams, just to kind of get a feel for them uh, and start thinking about them coming up this year. Okay. Um, so we talked about Washington, Oregon last week. This week I got USC first. So we're going to talk about USC uh, obviously, Caleb Boy. Oh, let me interrupt you. Yeah, big hockey tournament coming up too. Oh yeah, big. Forgot about that. I'm a huge hockey guy. There's so much going on. Right yeah, now. there's. Uh, yeah. We are. You know, as I said before, we didn't think we'd have much to do in the off season. And let me just tell you, March has been cray cray around here at the Big Man. Absolutely. Look, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. It looks like so we got some Florida State fans. Mm -hmm. Go Knowles coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we got Rick here. Rick, I think it's Tungate. He's an Indiana Hoosier fan. He follows the Big Ten. So welcome, Perfect. everybody. Sorry. So get in. Yeah. So you were going. Let's talk about USC. You know, everyone knows Caleb Williams is gone. He had his pro day. I think. I think today actually. Is it mm -hmm. yesterday or today? Looked real good. You know, former Heisman Trophy winner. Didn't have that great of a year this last year. But you know, he's going to be drafted. He's projected probably to go number one overall mm -hmm. or be the first quarterback taken. Um, so he's gone though. So USC. Um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about their quarterback situation. I think you'll find this a little bit interesting. Okay. Um, so that's the big thing. Lincoln Riley, you know, he's no that's his thing. He is known as kind of a quarterback whisperer, a quarterback savant. So who's his next uh, great project? Um, so right now, the, <coughs> the three leaders in the clubhouse, it's kind of a three-way competition. Miller Moss uh, finished the season really good last year. I think the bowl game played pretty well. Um, you know, finished strong. Uh, we got Jaden Maeva, um, who's a transfer from UNLV. Um, you know him very well. We I were do. excited to see where he was going to go. Uh, huge opportunity for him. And then we got Jake Jensen. I think I think he might have played in a couple games, maybe like their first game and last game. 
last year. He got some playing time. So you got three guys that have gotten some playing time either at USC or, in the case of Maeva, I think yep. he started 12 games with UNLV last year. So that that's really the story of this spring ball. Uh, you and or USC's roster just loaded with talent. You know they have one of the biggest NIL budgets. Uh, Lincoln Riley is a great recruiter. A lot of talent there in, in South Carolina. So or, I mean Southern California. Um, so you know they ton of talent. They got a great roster, but who's going to be their quarterback? That yeah. is the the big question mark for them. Well, well, and also with quarterback speak. So so they they took a Mountain West quarterback yeah. from me uh, from the Mountain West, I yeah. should say. But they lost. A quarterback, yes, to Boise, to Boise. What's his name? No, uh, Malachi Nelson. Malachi right? Nelson. He was yeah. the, the number one quarter recruit. You know, number one in his recruiting class. Number one quarterback. What two two years ago? I think it was two years ago. Yeah, he just he was a little more of a long term project. Just didn't work out uh, in USC. So yeah, he's up in Boise. Uh, so for if we have any Boise fans, you know, I, I think he will work out there. I think yeah. he's the kind of guy that can really take them to the next level. But maybe not right away this year. At least not in the first half right. of the season. Um, so. That's huge for them. Their quarterback battle. Also, their 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 new defensive coach, um, the DC coordinator. They got uh, Danton Lynn from UCLA. Mm-hmm. So you know, U- UCLA last year and Chip Kelly. You'd think they were an offensive team. Well, they actually had one of the best defenses Incredible in the country last defense. year. And USC's offense sucked. They fired. Um, <laughs> Ging- I think it's a G- uh, Gingrich. Yeah. Um, they fired him. They got rid of him. I think he was only there one year. And their off- their defense was just terrible. Yes. We were we were pretty honest about that last year. We were talking about them. So they're bringing in Danton Lynn from UCLA, just across town, basically. Last year, he was he took UCLA from number 72 overall defense to number 16 wow. in total defense. Wow. So huge improvement in one year, and I'm sure Lincoln Riley is hoping that's going to happen uh, at USC. Um, so, you know, I want to talk about just because we're focusing on them coming to the Big Ten. They have a lot of really big games next year. You know, they play Notre Dame every year at the end of the season. They're starting their season against uh, LSU. I think it's going to be in Vegas uh, at a neutral site, so it's a huge game to start. And the Notre Dame game obviously will be huge. But I really wanted to focus on a few Big Ten games to really say, like, welcome to the Big Ten. So, um, you know, right away, starting out September 21st, they're going to travel to Michigan, to the Big House, Ann Arbor, Michigan, play the Wolverines, uh, you know, defending national champion. Obviously, Michigan has lost some some players from their roster. They're losing to the draft and yeah. so on. But still, to go, I mean, that's a welcome to the Big Ten. Yes. You're going to go play the, the three-time defending Big Ten champions, the defending national champion in their place in front of 100,000 strong in the big house. Um, you know, people have really, one of the questions about these new teams that are coming from the pack to the Big Ten is, can they hold up? Can they stand? Can How can they match up the physicality? Yeah. And really, USC wasn't necessarily a real physical team next year. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out uh, right out of the gate, September 21st, uh, when they go to the big house, um, you know, what kind of team are they? Can they play the physical ball that the Big Ten demands? Do you have any thoughts about that game? Yeah, well, especially defensively, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they struggled mightily defensively. Very tough game coming yep. out of the gate as your first Big Ten matchup. Yep. Good luck to you, USC. Yep. That's all That's all my thoughts are. Good luck to you, USC. I think they're going to get a rude awakening, but we'll see. And I will say, so I was reading about their um, – they had some reports on spring ball, and one thing their new their new uh, D.C., uh, Danton Lynn, he's really focusing on is the, the front seven and specifically the D-line, mm. getting them bigger, getting them bulked up. Um, so they've been all, they've had this kind of plan through the strength and conditioning on the off season and through really their nutrition program, counting calories, getting those guys to get bigger. Yeah. Um, which you know they had trouble holding up last year to you know pack teams and even some Mountain West teams. I think sure. that they played so they really need to bulk up if they're going to hold up to to Michigan on September twenty first. Um, so then they turn around right after going to Michigan. And playing there, they're going to come home and they're going to host Wisconsin. Okay. So back to back weeks, you know, Wisconsin was not great last year. They they just had an okay record, um, but you know they play that that you know tough, disciplined football. They want to run the ball, um, and so for you know for those t- basically to start out kind of two of your first Big Ten matches, going on the road to play Michigan and then hosting Wisconsin, yeah. and then what I'll say this is this is a big one. Okay. October twelfth, uh, they're going to host Penn State. Mm-hmm. Um, huge, massive game. Um, you know, uh, again, you know, Penn State's not necessarily known for being that physical team. How as, as Michigan has that identity. However, 
you know, Penn State, the two, maybe the best running uh, duo, the best backfield duo yes. in the country um, with the fat man and with uh, Gatorade, Nick Singleton. <laughs> um, and, you know, a very strong defense, very physical defense. And so, again, welcome to the Big Ten. They get to travel to Michigan. They get to host Wisconsin. And then they got to bring – we'll see how their season is going at that point right. after they started the season with uh, LSU. And then they get to host Penn State. Um, you know, a team that's, you know, finished in the top between five and ten yep. pretty much every year the yep. last five years as Lincoln's, Lincoln Riley's teams have kind of struggled in, in many ways. So I think that that's going to be a huge test. We're going to find out a lot from those three games about USC coming into Big Ten play. All right. Well, I think you're going to get to UCLA next, if that, if I'm not mistaken. But I think you have a special guest that, that joined us here, Steve. Oh, yeah. Um, so I know you've been, been reaching out here a little bit to genetics, and it looks like he was able to get on. I see... We have quite a few FSU fans here. We have a Buckeyes fan, go Buckeyes, from Joey. Um, and, you know, here we have, I think, Genetics just just jumped on here right towards the end. So, hey, welcome. Thank you so much for, for joining us here on our live Big Mountain podcast. So, Joey, our Buckeyes fan. Yes. Um, I got, I got kind of, I want to I wanna hear something from him. I want to, I have a question for you I want you to put in the chat. So, you know, Ohio State had beaten Michigan, I think it was seven years in a row, maybe eight years mm-hmm. in a row, uh, under Harbaugh. Uh, until, you know, the, the whole cheating scandal broke oh out, gosh. whatever, and they lose three years in a row. So, Joey, our Buckeyes fan, do you, do you think that trend returns, goes back to the way it was before? You see the Buckeyes putting another long winning streak on Michigan, or do you see this more now as an even match where it can go back and forth? Because, honestly, there were some Ohio State fans that for a, after a while, they were like, you know, is this Michigan game even, maybe Michigan isn't our rival anymore. Maybe yeah. Penn State is or whatever. Maybe we don't have a rival. Maybe we're right. just a national team. Their um, rival is whoever makes it to the national championship. Yeah, exactly. Georgia, <laughs> Alabama, right, whoever. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm just interested, Joey, our Buckeyes fan, what do you think is going to happen with that series? Um, and, again, welcome to Genetics. I'm glad to have you here. Looks like he's talking a little bit about ESPN and the college football playoff. So we'll we'll get to that um, that topic here in a minute. But yep. I am going to talk to talk about UCLA. Yep. Uh, you know, Chip Kelly left them. I, I, in some ways, we've talked about his move. Uh, in some ways, I don't blame him. He wants to just go and coach people at Ohio State. Right. He's being handed the keys of a well-oiled offensive juggernaut, um, basically a Ferrari out there, and he can just go coach. He's prob- probably making close to the same amount of money he yeah. was as a head coach. But, boy, did he leave them in a lurch, <laughs> um, you know, so late. And, and to go – and really a step down from a one Big Ten head coaching position to a Big Ten offensive coordinator – um, but, you know, they brought in um, Deshaun Foster, a former great player with them, great player in the NFL, was with Houston, a uh, really good player who's been on staff with them. They brought him in as their head coach. He brought in Eric Bieniemy as mm-hmm. assistant head coach and offensive coordinator. Uh, who had, he is, That's a guy that has a great history. He yeah. was a very good offensive coordinator with Kansas City, came and was a coordinator with the Commanders, Commanders. for a, a, about one season. One year. Yep. Um, and, you know, he was a guy who was getting a lot of buzz for head coaching positions mm-hmm. in the NFL yes. and was looked at as one of the best offensive coordinators. So that's a great move to be able to bring him in. Um, so I'm sure those fans are excited about that. Um, but, you know, at this point, Dante Moore, they're, they're great. Uh, well, I won't say great quarterback, but he was a highly rated quarterback. Yes. Didn't really play that great last year under Chip Kelly, but he was a highly rated quarterback. He's left, gone to Oregon. So UCLA is in a complete rebuilding mode. Uh, I'll be honest, I was trying to do some research on UCLA. I was looking at their beat reporters mm-hmm. and just looking at the information. And a lot of the information I could find was, you know, maybe from January before <laughs> Chip Kelly had left. Um, of how they were rebuilding the roster, what they were doing. Yep. Well, now they have a completely new coach. Their website hasn't even, when I was looking, their website hasn't even been updated with a, with a roster for spring ball yet, wow. as far as I can see. Okay. Um, the, it hasn't been updated with the schedule for this year, so I had to go to the Big Ten's website to mm-hmm. look at the schedule. Um, so anyways, they're just a complete, as an organization, a yes. complete rebuilding project. They were kind of brought along as that uh, plus one with USC. Uh, they were brought to the big dance as a plus one. And, you know, they were always, there was always a question, are they going to struggle? Can they, can they uh, play with the big boys in the, in the big 10? They really hadn't had a ton of success in the pack the last five to 10 years. Yes. Um, and now they're a complete rebuild starting over. I think their situation is really interesting with Deshaun Foster and Eric the We'll see how they can do in recruiting. Recruiting is the lifeblood mm-hmm. of college football teams. Um, so we'll see. 
on that. They, as far as their quarterback battle, I couldn't even confirm who is on the roster this year <laughs> for the quarterback. So we'll, we'll have to follow them along uh, spring ball and see, you know, what, what their quarterback situation right. is. They had a great defense of last year, <laughs> but they lost a lot of players and they're rebuilding that. So we'll see. Uh, but they do. There's some games that kind of jumped out at me. First of all, September 28th, they're going to host Oregon. Okay. Now, Oregon was was already in the pack with them, so you know. But now they're in the Big Ten. That's a good again, right out of the gate, a really good test. Both you and I think Oregon is going to be really good this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they lost Bo Nix, but they brought in a great replacement. They Dan Lanning is still there and still kicking ass, in right. my opinion. So we'll know a lot about UCLA and their ability to stick with any, uh, whether they're just a total rebuild starting from the bottom or if they got anything where they can show they can hang with the big boys at all. Yep. And then, so September 28th, they host Oregon. A week later, they have to travel to Penn State. Happy <laughs> Valley, 100,000 fans. Likely, it's that game or the Washington game is going to be the whiteout. Okay. So 50-50 chance that's going to be a whiteout. So they probably are coming off of a, a, a butt kicking by Oregon, uh, and they have to go play at Penn State in Happy Valley yeah. October 5th. Mm. Uh, welcome to the Big Ten. Yeah, for sure. And then... Another game that really stood out to me, November 2nd. That's been a, a question mark about USC and UCLA going to play Big Ten teams yeah. in November and December on the road. So uh, November 2nd, they're going to play at Nebraska. Now, Nebraska was nothing to write home about last year. It was a rebuilding project for right. Matt Roll, But generally, his teams play discipline. They play tough, physical football. And, to, and for, uh, you know, a, a team that maybe isn't playing well or having a good record mm-hmm. to go on the road in November, play a Big Ten game at Nebraska, you know, in November, in the cold, probably going to be pretty cold. Yes. Um, that's going to be rough. So, I, again, I say welcome to the Big Ten for <laughs> UCLA. What, what are your thoughts on that? I agree. I, it, it could be a very rough year uh, for them heading to the Big Ten with – just a lack of a coaching staff and who knows what that's going to end up with. You talked about the quarterbacks and things like that. So uh, I think things are going to be rough for, for UCLA here in, in year one. Um, and, you know, to get back to, to Chip Kelly, I mean, he made it very, very clear uh, why he was making the switch. You know, he, he wants to be a football coach and basically only coach football wants to be on the field, have the relationship with the players, with the, with the quarterback, you know, he is not interested in running a business, which is what is now becoming of uh, college football, especially from the head coaching job with recruiting, transfer portal, all that kind of stuff. He, he was very clear that he, he just wants to be a coach for the players. So, you know, I wish him all the best. I know he, he's going to one of Penn State's biggest rivals, right? Yeah. So, um, but I appreciated him towards the end. He could, kind of just spoke it as it was. You could agree or disagree; it didn't really matter. But but he was speaking very honestly, and I give him a lot of credit for that. So, so I want to talk. So we have genetics in the chat, and I know he, okay. he was planning um, on coming, and he, I talked to him ahead of time, and yeah. you know he wanted to broach the topic of the, the college football playoff and how like the Big Ten and the SEC they're they're running the show. So if you're not following genetics on Twitter, you really should be. He has a lot of information about that. And, and you know, you don't have to agree or disagree with him. You know, he, he's bringing um, basically information that he hears and also just like collated information. He does his research and he puts the information out there. And you can take that information and do with it as you like. There's yeah. there's some people that just feel like they need to get you know into this combative nature. Yeah. Okay, you tweeted this one thing seven months ago and that ended up being – not true or, or whatever, or, or the result end up being slightly different. Um, and I just think it's a little silly. So make sure you're following genetics. He's got a lot of great information, college football playoff. If you're a Knowles fan, if you're an ACC fan, a lot of great information on expansion and realignment. Uh, and I'll just say, uh, I'm, I'm not the expert he is on all the different conferences. I really yeah, yeah. focus on the Big Ten. Uh, and just to quickly share... Uh, I've shared this on some other episodes. I have, I have a couple contacts within the Penn State program, the administration and the athletic department that I've made through my normal work that I have, um, my normal job, my day job, because we both have day jobs. We don't do this for prof- right. professionals. We're not right. paid for this. Uh, and to me, the most likely team right away, you know, we've talked about Florida State. I see Florida State in the Big Ten. Uh, I see them very soon. Genetics has talked about the importance of AAU, and there's, there's some people out there they just – they don't want to listen, and, and he what he said. I'm I'm in agreement with him 100. percent AAU is very AAU membership is very important to the Big Ten. Yeah. Uh, presidents, 
it's not the end all be all. You know, if Notre Dame wouldn't have gotten, they are now AAU members. Right. But if they didn't get that, they still would have been allowed in the into the Big Ten. But it is very important. It's a highly important item. It doesn't mean it's the end all be all. So uh, that's something to look at. Florida State is not currently an AAU member, but it's something they've been working on. And from what I understand, they're very close to that. Mm. Um, and so what are some other teams in the ACC that we've looked at? You know, North Carolina. I really think North Carolina is that battle between the uh, the SEC and the Big Ten. Uh, they are an AAU member, a very prestigious school in, in the state, the flagship university. So I could see them. Uh, a lot of people have kind of poo-pooed Virginia, University yeah. of Virginia, Virginia Cavaliers. I know that there is an interest in some parts of the Big Ten to move down that eastern corridor. And, yeah, UVA, they're not known as a football power, and that is very important. But as an AAU member and the market they're in, they are a possibility um, for, for the Big Ten or maybe even for the SEC. There's a lot, sure. of, there's a lot of talk, and I know Genetics has talked about this, where the SEC is interested in getting into the states of North Carolina and right. Virginia. Right. I don't have a lot of information on that, but I definitely have heard that before. So, for me, I say Florida State most likely – as the, as the next team to get in the Big Ten. And I think UNC and potentially UVA are, are good candidates. We'll see what happens with Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame has wanted to remain an independent. I know that NBC and the other networks, they want them to play more teams with or more games with Big Ten teams. Yeah, So we could see them on the horizon uh, as well. Um, and so that's... You know, Clemson. We Clemson is looking to get out of the uh, out of the ACC. We just did an episode on them. Yep. Uh, that'll be what maybe come out Wednesday. Come tomorrow. 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 Okay. So check well, that out. Wednesday. I wish it could come out oh, today, yeah. but yeah, it'll Thursday. come out tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> so check out that episode about Clemson. I have not personally heard any interest in the Big Ten for Clemson. I think Clemson has their sights on the SEC, but we'll see. Um, you know how that goes. They're just. I don't think that they they fit the the model that the Big Ten is looking for, um, but. Again, thanks to Genetics for coming in and, yeah. and being in the chat. And you know, if you if you just you're looking for information about expansion, realignment, the college football playoff, and, and you want information so that you can have a better understanding of it, follow him on Twitter. That's a great place to be. Yeah, just a couple things on that. I would say, um, you know, the v, when you you mentioned Virginia, and you you've mentioned several times here, Steve, about the Big Ten wanting to move down the the I ninety five corridor. Yeah. Virginia isn't that far down the I-95 corridor, so if they could get them, would they? Possibly. Um, but, you know, they, they, I definitely think they want to get into the Carolinas and definitely get into to Florida as well. And I would just say you mentioned North Carolina, UNC, and you yeah. kind of gave two options. I'm going to add a third option. So, obviously, you said Big Ten. You looked at SEC. And I would say they, they may be the last hope of the ACC. Yes. So. You know, you're going to hear that from us again. We have an FSU update coming out in uh, FSU ACC update coming out on Friday. And you got to bring that up. Like, you know, UNC potentially here, depending on what happens with FSU and Clemson. I mean, the the ACC could be hinging upon UNC uh, almost solely to to, to keep things together. So they're definitely uh, going to be a very interesting university to watch as we talk realignment moving forward i look at unc as the linchpin of this entire realignment phase this cycle of realignment um you're absolutely right i think there's going to be a battle between the sec and the big 10 over unc yeah and what do they do do they do do they decide to stick in the acc and keep the acc going do they move to a better uh better conference for them we had i think it was edward here that mentioned um, you know, about the Big Ten already being in Maryland, Northern Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, totally understand and totally agree. I don't think that I don't see Virginia as a priority for the Big Ten. I think Florida State uh, right now is a, is a massive priority. Obviously, Notre Dame is a huge priority. And I see UNC, UNC as a priority. Virginia is more of the one of those. It's just a possibility. I could see the SEC being interested and they fit the profile for the Big Ten. So if the Big Ten was trying right. to round out some expansion, they had three teams, they wanted a fourth, I could see them bringing in Virginia. But I agree, they're not a priority. Well, no 79 poo-poos Virginia. Oh, he okay. doesn't like the idea of Virginia. Yeah, well. But I, I do want to give a shout-out to, to somebody here because it's it's a school you mentioned maybe a month or two ago when we did just an overall realignment episode. Yep. Pre any of this FSU, uh, Clemson craziness, you know, getting hot and heavy. And that's Georgia Tech. And David Hall brings up GT for academics and market. And you actually, you brought that up several months ago for those exact reasons. Market would be huge for that school. Well, that's the thing. And 
you know, football success and football value is a massive driver, which is why Florida State uh, and North and Notre Dame are so important to the Big Ten. Um, Clemson, I think, has a would would be just a natural fit. They've had a lot of football success, and their their culture and their fit would be natural for the SEC. But there are some teams on the, Virginia. We don't know. You know, does the SEC want to move up there? Will the Big Ten? Georgia Tech is someone. I, they're not a priority. Okay, sure, they're not right. going to be a priority. But I don't think you can rule them out because sure. of their profile, because of their market, for sure. Understand? They're, they're, they're down on the list, but sure. there are a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get to some Mountain West. Am I? Can yes. I get some Mountain West? I know we're having West. fun with with uh, some CFP and some realignment stuff. Certainly with Big Ten. Let's get to the Mountain West, and of course, keep those those uh, comments coming. We'll get back to some of the comments. We always like to kind of in between some of the talk and the talking points that we have prepared. We like to get back on some of the comments, so Let's you keep it. monitoring that, Steve. A couple things I want to talk about here at the Mountain West. The first one, uh, there was an article that that, that came out uh, talking about spring practices, and the article listed kind of questions, the, the top question for every school, and I thought maybe we could have a, a, a quick conversation just on a few of them. I'm, I'm not going to go through all 12 schools with the Mountain West. That'd be far too much. But the ones that I looked at and I went, yeah, those are questions that I have right now, too. Yeah. Let's talk about Let's them. So the first one, the Boise State Broncos. And the question is, can the Broncos improve their pass defense? That is my question as well. And a little bit of the article talks about, you know, last year the secondary had a lot to be desired. One of the worst at defending the pass in the entire country. And this really could be, as we've talked about, we've been we've been starting to build Boise State up here quite a lot in the Big Mountain, and I know we're only in March, but this could really be the linchpin, to use a word you uh, said earlier, between a good team, a normal Boise State team, and that team that could be pushing for the G5 spot. If they want to be that team, I agree with this question, can they improve their Pass defense. Offense is not going to be an issue for Boise State. Right. It's not. They've got a solid quarterback, whoever it's going to be, young young quarterbacks, but they're going to be fine at quarterback. Unbelievably talented at running back with Genty. They brought in some great receivers. Their offense is going to be really strong. The other side of the ball I'm really concerned about, um, and I completely agree with this question about specifically the pass defense. I'm going to be doing a lot of research on that over the next couple months so I can maybe – understand that a little bit better and i'll say you know if if it's let's say it's exactly the same as last year they can win the mountain west like that they, sure. they were close oh, last year yes they can win the mountain west they can go you know 10 and 2 maybe 11 and 1 but if they want to get on that national spotlight yes uh they want to be that contender for college football playoff spot i agree that's a huge area that they need to improve yeah so i'm going to be watching that the next one the next two i'm going to talk about are teams that i feel like they're right on the edge of being Strong Mountain West teams. And I was I was down on them last year slightly, and they ended up being slightly down. That's going to be Colorado State and Utah State. So let's start with Colorado State. The question is, what will it take to reach a bowl game for this team? This is now going to be the third year for Coach Norvell. Mm -hmm. We all know what happened there with him up and leaving Nevada, mm -hmm. moving to Colorado State. His era is here. He's had some very, very strong recruiting, recruiting classes here uh, at, at Colorado State. And it is now time for them to make the next step. You can be a great coach and have a great coaching staff and have a good good recruits. But if you can't make a daggone bowl, yep. you know, be 500, yep. it's not going to last much longer. I mean, I'm sure he has a long leash at Colorado State. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he does. Um but I'll tell you what, for me, for, for this team, this coming year, not even a bowl game. I mean, this has to be an 8-4 and four type of team. I don't know if they're going to be, but they need to make that next step. I don't know if they're going to do it, though, Steve. I, I could definitely see them as a, as a, uh, a winning team, a bowl team. Um, th there's no reason why they can't. Yeah. Now, whether they will, whether they right. will take that next step, huge open question, but I think they can. I think they have that possibility. Okay, well, they better. 
because uh, they, they've had time now to, to build the team. Norvell has had time to, to build his team. Someone in the chat asked, well, can, can the Mountain <clears throat> West uh, invite Florida State? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess they could try. <laughs> I think uh, it must have been one of our other ACC fans that they're, they're, they don't want. Uh, they're not interested. Or maybe one of the Big Ten fans that doesn't want. Yes, I don't know if that fits into their regionality, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, Utah State, can the Aggies improve on defense? Another question I had. I actually had it all last football season. Their offense can put up serious points. I expect that to continue. They have a very good offense. They did not have a good recruiting class this, this year. That, that won't necessarily trans, transfer into next season's play yet. Um, but, you know, Coach Anderson um, has made defense a priority here over the, the offseason with transfers and things. He brought in a ton of new defensive coaches. He's trying to rebuild every position through transfers. It needs to work for them because they've got the offense to be a very solid Mountain West team. They just don't have the defense yet. So can a new coaching staff, some transfers to fill in some of their greatest needs, is that going to be enough to move them up and, and get, again, to be a bowl team? You know, I put them in Colorado State right there. They're, they're head in head, um, which one of these teams I think is going to break up and one of these – or go to the upward, I think one of these teams is going to have to maybe move on from their coach and start over, if you will, at at the college football level. Um, And I'm not really sure who it's going to be. I'll be honest with you. I guess I would think it's going to be Colorado State, but I'll tell you what, last year they just had more stinkers than they they ever should have had. So the last one, of course, you know, I have to talk about the Wyoming Cowboys because why not? And their question, can the Cowboys establish a passing offense? So you've asked me this question. We actually had a great question last chat before we got uh, before we had to stop and, and start over. One one of the questions now that I remember was about Svoboda, the, the incoming yeah. quarterback, and that offense. Um, their core, you know, in, in Wyoming is more, especially under C- Coach Craig Bowl, who has has retired. They're the old school, ground and pound, run the ball, play hard defense, win those close. 17 14 type of games and things i think this cowboy offense is ready to take the step forward into more of an aggressive passing style offense and i think svoboda is the guy to do it i am high on this kid will he make mistakes yes he's still going to be young um but i'm going to be high on him which makes me high on them and i think they will establish more of a passing offense than, than they've had. And Peasley did as good as he could do. He did as much as he could do. Um, but I, I think this Svoboda kid is, I think he's going to be pretty special. I, yeah, I would love to see Wyoming, even just a, a more aggressive passing game. Yeah. Challenge the defense a little bit more. Get, we'll, we'll make room for your running game. Uh, they, they were so conservative at times yes. last year. Um, you know, the, there was the one, I think it was the Fresno State game. Uh, where where uh, Peasley came out and was on fire, yeah, and th- that to me that is their that was their high water mark. Yes, um, you know when they can have a quarterback come out and really put pressure on the edges of the defense. They don't need a guy necessarily that's in that eighty yard touchdown pass, but be aggressive. Get the get the ball out to your playmakers on the edge. Get those linebackers taking a step back instead of a step forward on every snap. Yeah, um, and I, I think that would be great for that team. I agree. Well, we've talked football, Steve, and you know what March is? March Madness. It's March Madness. Are you ready to switch to a little basketball? Or do we need? Do we want to go back to some some Uh, comments? I want to say one thing. Okay. Um, A couple. Yeah, I want to go address a couple comments. So you know, Genetics was talking about uh, about Clemson and how I said I have not heard anything about them going to the Big Ten, which that might just be that I haven't heard it. Um, They may still be a possibility. And Genetics made a good point. You know, in the Kevin Warren era. Kevin Warren, well, he was really looking at specific markets. He wanted to get uh, into that L.A. market. That's what their TV, their media partners really wanted. He looked at specific markets. I really do think Tony P., the new commissioner, he really is looking at schools and their value, specific schools, not just markets, but specific schools, and basically adding them as properties, as kind of IPs to the Big Ten, um, which really could make some room for Clemson. Um, you know, I, I'm still not 100% sold on them, but I don't think we should discount them. Yes. Uh, just because I haven't heard it doesn't sure. mean that it's, you know, um, that it's not happening. And that was a great point. 
you know, the, the different commissioners they've had over the years have had different perspectives. The, oh. the presidents, they just want to add value and they like, you know, high academic standards. I agree. I'm sorry. I just went on tilt slightly oh. because of the last comment. Uh -oh. And I concur. More Guinness to the table, That's please. Right. More Guinness. I'm I'm dry. I'm so, dry. So for for the for that commenter, you should go back and check out our Oktoberfest That's right. <laughs> episode. It was freaking phenomenal. It was fantastic funny. episode. So go back. I think it's in in our channel. We have different categories, and I think it's like dudes having fun. Uh, I don't know. Something like that is our Oktoberfest episode. Go check that out. So a couple things I got to point out, and then okay. we can get to basketball. All right. So uh, again, Noel seventy nine. I this might I don't Noel seventy nine. Is this your first time with us? I don't recognize uh, this handle and this commenter, but welcome, sir. And he also states that these guys are uh, among the best two YouTube hey. football prognosticators. Salute. Guinness me another, please. You know, um, oh, oh, the bakers are saying that. I, that's I got, what Nugget made. I got a big water. Well, I'm a big guy. Big <laughs> bottle for a big guy. Big 10. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, on the so, big mountain. That was going to be my next one. Shout out to the big water bottle. Yep. Apparently, I need a double so I can get more Guinness in my glass yeah. next time. Uh, also, Steven is on. Welcome, Stephen. Glad to hear you just did another Bobcat Corner. I know I will check that out. Stephen is a is a pack our Mac pack Mac fan and a Ohio Bobcat fan. Welcome here. Thanks for for coming on here again. We're up to forty all of a sudden, Stephen. Yeah, what that's the heck awesome. is happening? But anyway, all right. So let's get into apologize. Yes, we are ninety five percent football. Yeah. But I have taken a hold of March Madness thanks to six Mountain West teams being in the big dance, and we got to talk some basketball. So are we ready to do the brackets? Do the no, brackets I want to talk about some other things real okay, quick, and right. then we're going to do brackets. Okay. So I first need to, again, uh, talk about I – I, I first want to talk about uh, CSU last night, mm -hmm. Colorado State University, dominating Virginia. Absolutely. Yep. Dominating, 67-42. And, yes, Virginia, the team that got third in the ACC this year. Okay, um, and that team was twenty three and eleven overall this year. Tonight, starting about right now, so we got to wrap up so I can watch this this game. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we have Boise playing versus Colorado, and uh, Colorado finished third in the pack with an overall record of twenty four and ten. As I mentioned in uh, uh, our video on the Mountain West and and the, and the brackets tournaments. Very disappointed that Boise State here is number 10 ranked, and I absolutely hate the first four. Yeah. For at least 10 seeds. Just completely asinine. I got the we got the win with the Rams last night. Come on, Broncos. Win this win this stupid first four crap against the, the Buffaloes of Colorado. Virginia should not have been in the tournament. Uh no. I know what the had, heck? Basically. They only scored 17 points in a Freaking half. They they were bad. They won the national championship, I think, in 2019. Their coach, you know, he's a good coach, but he really has not changed his style whatsoever. Mm. They did not have a great season. I was really surprised they made it at all. Okay. Especially considering some of the Big East teams that didn't make it. They just, they really shouldn't have been there. Um, and, and I think Colorado State was a little bit frustrated to be in that seed and play that game. And they took it out on Virginia and played a great game. They kicked their butts. They did. They did. All right, let's move on. One ranking that I really didn't focus on, and I really should have, and you sent me a text, I think, about, I don't know what it was from, but it was like the biggest miss of the entire uh, uh, NCAA bracket committee's rankings, mm -hmm. yep. and that is Nevada Wolf, Wolfpack. I agree. I think both Boise and Nevada um, were completely, their, their, their rankings just completely off. These two teams were... Ended the season tied for second in the conference. Yep. Second in the conference. Um, overall, Nevada was 26 and 7 for the season. Their net ranking was 34, and they were slotted well below their rank. It makes no sense to me. Boise State's net ranking was 27 for Pete's sake. 27, and they got to play in a first four. Screw that. Preliminary. Round, it's it's bunk. You know, Sunday was St. Patrick. I got a theory. Sunday was St. Patrick's Day. The selection Sunday, uh, you know, the selection committee was they drank way too much damn Guinness when they were yeah. doing these brackets. They should have saved it for me. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I, I will just say I understand the net ranking isn't everything. I mean, I know we had a lot of New Mexico Lobos fans when you were kind of being like, I don't think they're going to make it. They got to win the tournament yep. to make it. 
Uh, and they're going, oh, they're going to make it. Their net ranking is 35 or something like that. And sure enough, I saw that the only reason they did make yep. it was because they, they won the tournament. I actually commented yep. on that on that episode. I kind of wonder if what would have happened if they didn't win the tournament. Apparently, the CFP committee chair or somebody came he out said and said straight up. They took they a spot. Would, they took yes. a spot. They, they would wouldn't have, have made the tournament. Yes. So you were, you were on that Absolutely. spot on, Steve. Well done. But we got the six. Now, a really neat thing. We're going to throw some stuff up here on the screen. I saw this, and I just loved it. Um, the, the Mountain West did something really neat for their six teams uh, that, that made it into the dance. They added some well wishes uh, to uh, a board on Times Square. And at the top of the Mountain West, when it reads, Best of luck to our six Mountain West teams in the NCAA tournament. And then above uh, every team, they had a, a separate board for all six teams. Yep. Above that, it read, The Best in the West. Yep. Fantastic. Well done, Mountain West Conference. And, you know, as we said, I, I sent you another item, which I found really, really funny. I'm going to bring it up right now. It doesn't have to do with basketball. But the back in the beginning of the month, when there all of this Washington State stuff was ongoing, and, you know, somebody tweeted out the, the comment that President Schultz mentioned that they want to be in the premier conference in the West Coast. Yep. It's funny, the AD of uh, Boise, Jeremiah Davis or something like that, responded to that tweet and just said, join the Mountain West yeah. or something like that. Yep, yep, you can join us and be the, in the premier West side of the country's Certainly conference. this year for basketball, for sure. Fa well, yeah. He meant for everything. Okay. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. But anyway, um, so yeah, I think with that, you want to get into some tournament fun. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I did my bracket. You did I your brought bracket it along. So you want you want to tell them, tell, tell the viewers about all the challenge we're doing. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to uh, allow all of our viewers to submit a bracket by noon tomorrow, and um, you have to get that to us again by noon Eastern time. Noon Eastern time tomorrow. You send your bracket to our email address, thebigmountain3 at gmail.com. Thebigmountain3, the number three at gmail.com again by noon eastern tomorrow we'll keep all of them i know steve will have one yeah. i'll have one anybody else that wants to submit can have one and we'll give away anything from our big mountain uh shop you can have shirts hats whatever you want we'll give it away to the winner of the big mountain tournament awesome ncaa bracket tournament i should say to be more bracket specific. challenge bracket challenge there you go so do you want to say anything about your bracket? You give anything away? You're going to keep it uh, under lock and key like the ACC does. Mm, let's see. Let, let me. Uh, I have two Mountain West teams making the Sweet Sixteen. Okay. And I have one Big Ten team making the Final Four. That's Ooh. All, all right. Okay. I won't ask. Okay. I won't have you give it away. No. I have not completed my bracket yet. I haven't completed it yet. And the whole first four crap doesn't count. Okay. Yeah, the the the, the ten seed silliness and the sixteen seed stuff that, that's going on tonight, it, it it doesn't count. Nine minutes. The game starts I, in nine it's minutes. It's starting soon. So the only other thing I wanted to bring up, Steve, and then we can go to some more comments to kind of wrap things up okay. here, um, was as everybody I think is well aware, Clemson has filed a lawsuit mm -hmm. against the ACC, specifically talking about three main things. Item number one is uh, the grant of rights and kind of the timeline of that. The scope is how they put it. The scope of the, of, of the grant of rights. Um, does it really go to 2036 or can we get out of it? The other one has to do with the withdrawal penalties and what they now call the severe withdrawal penalties and what that looks like and, and the fact that they deem them to be unenforceable, things that you hear from FSU as well. And then the third item is this whole idea of fiduciary responsibility of members to the conference. So those are the three main things. We just recorded an episode right before we went live. We're going to get it out tomorrow. We go over the Clemson filing, what they're asking for, what they're looking at. It, Frankly, Steve, as I said in that episode, it's a fantastic, it was a fantastic read and filing, partially because we've been so into this. I already know a lot of the ongoing, so I... I can relate to a lot of what they're saying, uh, but it's laid out very, very well. Hopefully we lay it out very, very well on that episode, but that will drop tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, please make sure you come back, check out our channel. 
Um, and we're gonna we're getting into Clemson now too. I'll tell you, I, I'll make this promise to all of our Knowles fans, ACC fans, Clemson fans that are on watching now. We will be diving into every twist and turn in this case. We can't promise that you're gonna like our opinion. We're gonna try and give you an unbiased opinion from a Big Ten fan and a Mountain West fan. Um, but I can promise you that we will follow and we're going to talk about, we're going to have a discussion with you about every twist and turn and development in the, these ACC lawsuits. For sure. Absolutely. I, I, I see genetics had to, uh, to exit. We really appreciated him for popping on here for a little while. Love the discussion. That's what we're all about here in the Big Mountain, Steve, is yes, we give our opinions. Yes, I like the Mountain West, so I'm a bit of a Mountain West homer. Yes, you like the Big Ten. Maybe you're a bit of a Penn State homer, at least. Absolutely. Um, but we like the discussions, and I think that was your point with the genetics uh, items that, yeah. that he puts out there. You can agree, you can disagree, but at least give it some thought. Yeah. Give it, hey, that's the other side of the equation. Not right or wrong. Right. Have an open mind about some stuff. Nobody has a crystal ball. What we're trying to do is have an intelligent conversation. Absolutely. So, um, yes, no 79. We did see the ACC did respond uh, as well. Of course, they responded in Mecklenburg County, yep. which is their go-to uh, in North Carolina. Um, there's just too much going on. We couldn't get to that right away. We're going to get to that. We'll probably do a, an episode on that uh, early next week because uh, we, we only try to record twice a, a, a week because we have – as Steve said, families, kids, lives, jobs, all that good stuff as well. So we did see that. Thank you for putting that out there. And it's a pleasure having everybody on here to Noel 79 Stephen, Edward, Genetics, everybody. I don't want to miss anybody. But thank you guys for, for watching. Anything before we head out, Steve? Nope, that's it. <coughs> all right. Well, with that, we'll close this one out. We're right about at the hour mark. I think we want to try to keep these at, at an hour. We're going to continue to try to do live episodes Wednesday evenings as much as we possibly can when our other lives don't get uh, in the way of, of doing this. And with that, hey, we say happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, what is it? Salud. Salud. Salanche. Salanche. And we'll see you guys next time on the Big Mountain. A big man needs a big water bottle when he goes on the Big Mountain. Mm-hmm.